Hey guys, it's Sarah with americantrucks.com and today we have a review and install of the Rough Country Dual 6 inch Chrome Series LED Grill Kit fitting your 19 and newer Ram 1500, Bighorn, Laramie and Tradesman models. This is perfect for the Ram owner who wants to add auxiliary lighting to the front of their Ram and like the subtle look of this kit that blends right into the factory grill. This complete kit includes twin single row six inch LED light bars, as well as brackets that mount to your factory grill, adding lighting to the front of your Ram. So this is gonna improve nighttime visibility when you're off-roading thanks to these light bars flood beam pattern. These light bars feature clear shatter resistant lenses with aluminum housings and the highest rating for waterproofing for electronics, as well as a lumen output of 2,800 lumens. So as far as price goes, this one comes in at around $175, which puts it on the lower end price-wise when compared to other options. And for your money, you are getting this complete kit which sits flush in your grill, where most other options are just pod lights, which will be a lot harder to fit. I'm giving this install a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. It does require cutting of your factory grill, which can be tedious. So Rough Country suggests you cut out about five to six hours of your day for this install. But with that said, let's jump into your install. For this install, you will need ratchets or an impact gun, eight, 10, 11, and 12 millimeter sockets, a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench, pop clip removal tool, flathead screwdriver, a body saw, and a five and four millimeter Allen key. You may also want some scotch tape to protect your grill. All right, so the first step in our install is to grab a pop clip removal tool or a flathead if you don't have one and remove all of the pop clips that are holding in our red support cover. All right, with all the pop clips removed on this red support cover, grab the front part and pull up. It needs to clear the posts that are sticking through. It also needs to clear the fenders on each side and remove it. Now with the rad support cover removed, we do need to remove two more pop clips right above the headlight. Using your pop clip removal tool or a flathead screwdriver, get under and remove them. Repeat that on the other side. There should be another identical one right above the other headlight. All right, next up, we're gonna remove the 10 millimeter bolts that hold on this top plastic trim piece because we do need to remove this to get to our grill. Grab a 10 millimeter socket, and we're using an electric ratchet just to speed it up. A regular ratchet will work. All right, so with all the bolts on top removed, you can pull this off in one piece. Next up, to get to the bolts that hold the bottom of the grill in, we need to remove this plastic fascia piece that's right on top of the bumper between the headlight and the bumper. There's two eight millimeter bolts. We need to remove those now. There is one more bolt that holds on this plastic piece and you can get to it through this small hole between the fender and the plastic piece itself. You will need a 10 millimeter wrench. We're gonna try a ratcheting wrench to remove this. All right, so once you remove the three bolts in the wheel well, you can grab this piece and pull it off to release it from the clips. Now, if this has not come off before, it may be difficult. But if you just grab it and pull back nice and quickly, it should come off. All right, so this last corner is hung up on one of these plastic tabs, which is how this is held onto the truck. Now, if it is hung up and you can see it, grab a small, a thin trim panel removal tool. Just go in between 
and release the tab. If you're worried about hurting any of the paint or the grill, you can tape this off with masking tape. Now we can repeat that process on the other side. All right, now this third bolt is a little bit too difficult to get to with your wrench. You can remove more of the wheel well liner just to get a better angle on it. All right, so next up, now that we can see these three bolts, they all have to be removed to release the bottom portion of our grill. So grab your 10 millimeter socket and let's get these out. Repeat that on the other side. Next up, we can remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that are holding in the top of the grill. All right, so with the bolts removed, we're gonna pull up on these tabs to release the grill. And then it should remove right off the front of the truck. All right, at this point with the grill out, we have it laid on the table and we're gonna remove the surround from the actual grill itself. There should be several little eight millimeter bolts. We're gonna take that out to separate the grill from its surround. Next up, we're gonna release these plastic clips to separate the two pieces of our grill. There is a small little window you can go into from the side, or you can just push back with your hand and just release it like that. And we're gonna release these three in this section here just to make it a little easier. And then pulling up, you can use your flathead for this as well. Just pull up to make sure they're fully released. This will help us get to the rest of them. All right, take another pass around, make sure they're all released and you can help them out by prying up at the edges. Don't forget about these four on each side of the grill here. These also need to be released. All right, once you've released the last clip on the grill, it should come right out. All right, so in order to fit our pod lights, we need to cut around the plastic part right on the inside edge of the chrome of this grill. Now, so we don't damage the chrome section, we're just gonna hit some uh, painter's tape right on the edge here just to put something between the saw and the plastic. This is not necessary, but I just pick a little added protection so we don't hurt the grill at all. Also, it is worth noting that the light will sit a little bit up, so if you do clip the edge,
Now you can mark this off if you would like. But we're gonna use the edge of the chrome as sort of our guide. We wanna get as close to it as possible without cutting into it. All right, so you're gonna get your body saw, reciprocating saw, and we're just gonna cut right around on the edge like that. Remember, you can always take more out later, so if you wanna just play it safe, then you can come back in with a file or take another pass with this, that will work. Cutting this out in sections just so we can get a better angle on everything. And again, we can come back and just clean up this rough edge later with the saw or with a file. All right, now I'm just going to continue with doing this in sections because it's a little bit easier. The plastic kind of wants to mold back to itself. So I'm just going to cut up this piece and then I'll finish my loop around the end. <laughs> All right, so once we repeat that process on the other side and both of your holes are cut and cleaned up, we can install the light bars. We're gonna install them to the bracket surrounds first by lining up these two holes to each side of the light bar. Now keep in mind where your battery is on the truck, so I'm gonna route both of these pigtails out towards the left side, which will be the driver's side, to go to our battery. Using your Allen head hardware with a washer and a lock washer, go ahead and thread them into the light. Using the included Allen key, tighten these down. All right, now we can repeat that with the other side. All right, now we can install them into our grill. Install the light by installing the wiring harness through your grill. And press it into place. Install your hardware. And this bracket goes on the other side and sits flush against this and holds it in. Repeat that on the other side. Now, depending on how much you took off, these lights might sit a little bit snug, but once the brackets are on, they should sit nicely. All right, so we're holding the Allen head side with a four millimeter Allen key, and we're gonna use an 11 millimeter socket on the lock nut side and tighten it down. Remember, you are tightening into the plastic of the grill, so don't over tighten these. And as you can see, the formation of the bracket, we really couldn't see that well last time. It's flat up against the front piece and it's catching each of the sides to hold it in place. Repeat that with the other bolt. Repeat on the other side. All right, now I can lay the back part of our grill 
back over top and snap it into place. Grab the hardware and reinstall it. All right, so now we can run our wiring harness. I'm gonna start by running the two connectors that go to the lights in the grill down from behind the rad support and through so that we can hook them up later. The rest of the wiring harness will then go to the battery and then into the truck for our switch. I'm gonna leave them here for now. Then we can tuck away our excess and zip tie it out of the way later on. All right, now we can hook it up to the battery. Now we do need to mount this relay somewhere and there is two bolts here that hold on the bracket for the ECU. I'm gonna use the one that's farther near the negative terminal on the battery. We're gonna mount it up there and then we're gonna attach our positive and negative terminals to the battery. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pull this bolt out. Again, you can mount the relay wherever you like, but this is a pretty convenient spot. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. All right, now that the relay is mounted up, we can remove these two nuts on the positive and negative terminals of our battery in order to mount up these eyelets. Now, if you are concerned, you can disconnect the battery completely before you do this, but we should be fine as long as we're careful doing it this way. Using a 10 millimeter socket, disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. Now this is not the main terminal, this is just this nut here, so we can slip the eyelet over top. Using a 12 millimeter socket, remove this nut on the positive side of the battery. Place the positive eyelet over the positive terminal and reinstall the nut. Using your 12 millimeter socket, tighten it down. Replace the positive side. Now it is worth mentioning that anywhere that gets you positive and negative power and ground to your lights will work. You don't have to go over the battery, but I believe this is a pretty easy way and convenient with how long the wiring harness is. Now replacing the nut on the negative side and using our 10 millimeter socket, tightening it down. Make sure these wires are tucked out of the way and zip tie them if necessary. All right, so now we're gonna run the switch for our lights. Now I've taken the switch connector off the end here so we can just run this. There's several ways you can run this. You can go through the fender, but I think it's a little bit cleaner if you go through one of the grommets in the firewall. There are several to choose from, but I think the easiest one is underneath this large plastic connector just behind the battery. You should be able to pull it out to the side at least, run this through, and then we'll get the other side underneath our dash. We're gonna pull it through the hole in the firewall. Now we can connect our switch. Now I think we should go through this boot here around our steering wheel and just pop it out like this. So I'm going to run that through the bottom of this boot. Again, however you choose to route this is totally fine. Just make sure the wiring is out of the way of all your moving parts. We're going to aim for right about there. Peel the adhesive off the back of your switch. Make sure the surface is clean. We're gonna stick it down. Now that you've pulled the wire out from underneath your dash, connect it to the wire we pulled through the firewall. You should see your switch light up. And now we do need to fold up this excess wiring 
and zip tie it underneath the dash out of the way so that it does not interfere with the pedals. All right, now you can plug in your connectors. Make sure you hear a click. Now we're gonna install our grill and then we're just gonna double check that these are sitting where we want them. And then we can zip tie them out of the way to make sure they're not interfering with anything. Line up your grill. Make sure they're over these two posts by the headlights. And then reinstall the hardware. All right, now we can reinstall the lower hardware on our grill. And tighten them down. Repeat that on the other side. Now you can reinstall the bolts holding in the top of your grill. Now you can reinstall these trim pieces by lining up all of the tabs to the holes right underneath the headlight. There should be two on the grill as well. Just press them into place. Line up the corner and press it into place. All right, so now we can reinstall the bolts that hold on this piece from the side. Now, if you did take out extra bolts out of your wheel well liner in order to get to this a little better, remember to put those back in. And then using your 10 millimeter socket or 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench, tighten this down. Make sure that you're tucking back in your fender liner and reinstalling any of the bolts that you took out. Repeat that process on the other side. And once that trim piece is in place, reinstall the bolt in the wheel well. Now using either your 10 millimeter socket or 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench, tighten this down. All right, now you can replace the chrome trim piece at the top. Line up each post underneath each fender and line up all the bolt holes and the tabs up top and press it into place. Now you can replace the pop clips. Now you can replace your rad support cover. Make sure it's tucked in to the fender on each side and over top of all these posts. Line up the holes and install the pop clips.
All right, so that is going to do it for the review and install of this grill kit. And remember, for all things Ram, keep it at americantrucks.com.